Using AI tools in finance can save you a ton of time, but if you're not using the right tool, all that time savings could be in vain. I tested seven AI tools for finance, and you will not believe the results. Let's just say not all AI tools are created equal. In this video, I'm gonna give seven AI tools the same prompt and the same task to create a financial forecast. And we'll watch and see the different levels of quality and output that we get from each tool. If that sounds good, let's get started. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Mike. I'm a senior finance leader and I've spent more than a decade working in finance everywhere from brand new startups all the way to the Fortune 100. And over the last few years, it's been impossible to escape AI. So I've gotten more and more interested in what these tools can do and how they can save us time. But when I first started, I just defaulted to ChatGPT for everything. Until I started to realize that not all the AI tools are built the same way. Not all of them are built to do the same things. So I thought, what would happen if I gave seven different AI tools the exact same task? to use time series analysis to create a basic forecast. Well, I'm gonna do that live with you to go through the seven biggest AI tools on the market today, all of which are totally free by the way, so you can do this on your own, and we're gonna find out how they each handle it and which ones excel and which ones fall short. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly which AI tool should be the go tool and which AI tool you should run as fast as you can from. And if you're really excited about AI tools, then I've got a great surprise for you. Just for watching this video, I'm gonna give you a free copy of my book, AI Prompting for Finance. Click the link down in the description, I'll send you a free copy of that book. Just because you're watching this video, I'll also send you my weekly newsletter, Finance Automation Insider, that's gonna give you a lot more finance tips and automation hacks to help you at work. All right, let's get started. So I've got all seven of our AI tools up here loaded and ready to go. We're going to go through ChatGPT, kind of the OG, Claude from Anthropic, Gemini, which is Google's model and integrates with Google Sheets, anything there, Microsoft Copilot, which integrates with Excel and PowerPoint and Teams, DeepSeek, the one that made a lot of news lately and killed some stock valuations, Amazon Nova, which you probably haven't even heard of. It's pretty new, but it's also from Amazon and you never want to discount Amazon. And then Meta AI from the creators of Facebook and Instagram. I've got a file we're going to be using and I simplified data file. So this is our coffee shop data AI. We've got the date from January 1st, 2023, all the way down through December 31st, 2023. And these are just going to be the coffee sales and the revenue by day as it actualized. Uh, and then we've got our prompt we'll paste in. I'll show you that shortly. So let's go ahead and get started with chat GPT. I'm going to paste in the prompt. Now this is going to be using my Spark framework. If you want to learn more about the Spark framework, again, that's in the free book. I'm going to give you the ultimate guide to AI prompting. Just click the link down in the description and the Spark framework will be described in detail. Act as a financial analyst. I need your help forecasting sales for a coffee shop. Using time series analysis, forecast the next six months of sales based on the data in the attached file. Give me a line chart of the forecast as well as a downloadable CSV file. Ask me any questions you need to give the best possible response. And we're going to give every tool the same prompt because this is a well-structured prompt for a basic forecast. All right, so we're going to go ahead and attach our AI data file. There it is right there. Pop that in. And once it's loaded, we'll hit send and see what ChatGPT comes back with. All right, it's loaded the data into a format it can understand, and now it is analyzing our query. All right, and it's coming back. So this is really interesting. ChatGPT gave us exactly what we asked for from an output standpoint. It gave us a chart. Looks like we can download that chart right here. It gave us a coffee sales forecast, but the forecast looks absolutely insane. Look at this. This is our actual, this is our actuals data. It's forecasted this massive jump. Now let's see, is the CSV file just as ridiculous? Let's take a look. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it's not necessarily crazy. It just gave us the sales by month instead of by day. So let's just ask it if it can fix that. Can you show the forecast 
by day, not by month. Okay, so maybe it's not as crazy as we thought. And maybe an opportunity to be more specific with our prompt. Okay, this looks a little bit better. So we've got all of our actuals data is here. Here's our forecasted sales. It looks like they're kind of trending down over time, but this is a lot more in line. And you see the, the kind of variability. I'm guessing it's gotten the by day correctly. And it's given us our CSV again. Okay, so thought for a second we were going to lose it with ChatGPT there, kind of the OG that everyone defaults to. It was just more about prompting and the fact that we needed to ask it for daily. Didn't do that automatically and could kind of throw you off a little bit, but at least the output was pretty solid. So that's ChatGPT. All right, now let's turn to Claude. Let's give it our exact same prompt. Let's give it our Excel file. Here's our coffee shop data AI. We'll go ahead and open that up. And we will hit send and see what happens. All right, Claude is processing. It understands what we want to do. It's saying I can see daily coffee sales for 2023. And then it has a couple of questions. Okay, so this is really interesting where ChatGPT just went to monthly and kind of surprised us. Claude is asking if we want it daily or aggregated and if there's any specific factors or events. So this is really interesting. We're actually getting kind of a better interaction with Claude here. I would like the forecast to be daily. There are no specific events or factors to consider. And we'll send. Oh, this is really interesting. It's kind of showing us the back end of how it's processing this. Well, this is really cool. It looks like it could take a while, but this is really cool. All right, it looks like Claude has finished processing the data. Now it's starting to build the forecast for 2024. So, so far, much, much slower than ChatGPT, but a much better interaction to make sure we get the data we're looking for. All right, so very interesting. Claude couldn't handle processing that relatively small data set. I mean, we're just talking... Uh, a year of individual values, as well as six months of a forecast. And it did so much work over here to come back and say, hey, we had an error, and the error is that we hit the maximum length of this message and we just can't do it. So a little bit disappointing because it seemed like we were headed down a really good path, but for your general use, probably not a great tool if it, if it can't handle processing all of that. Have any questions so far? Go ahead and drop them down in the comments. I read and respond to every single one, and I am more than happy to help you out. Now let's come over to Gemini. So Gemini is from Google. It will work right with you in Google Sheets. Let's go ahead and put our prompt in. And again, it's from Google, one of the best tech companies out there. So I, I would have relatively high expectations for this. So this is interesting. We can't pull an Excel or a CSV file into Gemini. That actually really surprises me. It does look like we can pull in from Google Drive though. So let's go ahead, I'll create a file and we can pull in from there. All right, so here's a quick file that I popped into Google Sheets. Here's the coffee shop sales and hopefully Gemini will be able to work with this. So again, really interesting, Gemini still won't let you pull in a Google Sheet. How crazy is that? Now, I do know that if we go to our Google Sheet, we have a Gemini button over here. So let's go ahead and enter the prompt and see what we can get out of it. Okay, I am gonna allow one little tweak to the prompt just to say, using time series analysis based on the data in this file. Because I know Gemini has promised that they can work with data like this. So let's see what happens. This is doing it straight in Google Sheets. Not quite what we expected to be doing, but I just want to see if we can get this out of here. I'm really surprised that you can't work with any of these kind of files. All right, so it looks like it is running. So within Google Sheets, it's working. Here's our forecasted sales versus actual sales. And it's saying it's giving us a CSV file. This is really interesting. So if I go to this preview, it has actually not given us a forecast. It stops at December 2024. It's blank. It's also saying it's giving us a sales forecast, but it hasn't. Honestly, really disappointed with Google. It was hard. You couldn't work straight with Gemini with any of these kind of files. And then even in, in Google Sheets, it's acting like it's giving us an output. But look at this, completely blank.
Wow, I did not expect this from Google. Now let's move on to Microsoft Copilot. This is available either straight through the web app or it's available in your tools like Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook. Since this is from Microsoft, the inventor of Excel that we all know and love, I really hope it can work with Excel files unlike Google. So let's go ahead and find out. All right, so we've got Copilot, we're logged in. You have to be logged in to put in a file. So we're gonna put in our prompt there. We're gonna go ahead and attach our file. Fingers crossed it's gonna work. Yes, we can pull in Excel or CSV, amazing. Let's pop that in there and hit send and see what we get back. Okay, it's executing the task. It seems to understand what we want it for. All right, it's coming back. That was pretty darn fast. So here's our actual sales, here's our forecasted sales, and then we have a downloadable file. Now I will say looking at the forecast, um, the forecast doesn't look great. It looks like it comes down pretty darn fast. I mean, uh, it, it may be declining in this data set because we saw that earlier, but it's definitely not coming down that fast. So it did give us something, but a little odd. So let's just give it one more chance. The forecast decline much faster than the data set. Can you please try again? And let's just give it one more chance because that, that definitely doesn't look like it's on trend. But at least we could use an Excel and CSV file this time. Uh, let's see, use a method that doesn't rely on seasonal cycles. Okay, let's try to do time series analysis without seasonality. So it's going to use just a basic linear regression model. It says it's going to provide us with an updated forecast, but nothing is coming. All right, let's try that again. Definitely a few more times than I expected to be prompting the tool from the people that brought us Excel. And it did the same thing again. It said its main time series analysis failed. It says it's going to provide us an updated forecast, and it didn't. Wow. This is from the maker of Excel, and also the maker of Google couldn't even take an Excel file. Yikes. So, so far, for all in, ChatGPT is still our best bet, which is actually kind of surprising considering how many other people have pumped money into this. But let's go ahead and try DeepSeek. So here's DeepSeek, the app that broke the stock market. Let's go ahead and paste in our prompt, and then let's see what we can attach. Okay, so DeepSeek will take in Excel and it will take in CSV. Go ahead, open that and we will see what it can give us. Hit send, and away we go. I'm a little scared after Gemini and Copilot, not gonna lie. Okay, so kind of like Claude, it's coming back and asking us some really good questions. Okay, okay, so it, it's, this is really cool. So Claude asked us the questions, DeepSeek asked us the questions, it proposed how we should handle it, and then it summarized the data. And so I'll say, I would like to proceed with the defaults. All right, so now it's telling us the methodology it used how it worked. It's giving us an analysis of what it's seeing in the data. And then it's giving us the data set, full table in a downloadable C CSV. This is really well formatted. It's using Python with pandas. So this is absolutely fantastic. It's giving us a line chart. It's telling us what it's observing. It's giving us forecast data, it's giving us the details on the model, and it's even giving recommendations, like you should increase staffing for the weekends to get better sales, you should have more inventory in certain months, you should run promotions midweek because we're seeing low demand there, and then it's also giving you the Python information that it used to run this. Wow. So, so far, DeepSeek is the absolute winner. I see why this broke the stock market. So we got two more tools to try. Let's go to Amazon Nova. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I post new videos like this every single Monday with automation hacks and other tips to help you succeed at work. All right, so we've got Amazon Nova open. This is a really new tool, but again, I will never count Amazon down. 
All right, so attachments are disabled when live information is toggled. Let's turn that off. We'll try that again. It will allow us to put in Excel and CSV. It's telling us what it's gonna do. It has a few questions for us. Claude, it's asking us questions. No recommendations like DeepSeek. There are no known seasonal patterns or external factors. I provided daily data and would like the forecast to be daily. All right, now it's telling us what it's going to do. Looks like it's going to use some Python to run this for us. Please run this code in your environment to generate the forecast and the CSV file. Can you generate? Can you generate the forecast? Okay, so I asked it to do it. Here's the complete code. You can download the forecasted sales to download the CSV here. This will generate the forecast plot and provide you with a base64 encoded CSV file. So, no. It's going to give us all the code. It's giving us really good code. It's giving us a really solid output and telling us all the steps to the process. But Amazon Nova, in its default form, is not able to just process these files and give us an output. So, kind of surprising. Maybe a future improvement because, again, this model is new. But um, at least it's giving us a good kind of interactive process. It looks like it could be good for coding. Kind of from that coding video I learned earlier, it could be a good tool for that, but it's not able to give us an output. So this was interesting. So I tried going through uh, Meta AI the regular way. I just came up with a button that I kept clicking and clicking to accept the terms and conditions, and it just would not clear. So um, I think that's a me problem, not a you problem, but just be aware that there, there could be a little bit of a login issue there. But we got it to work in a private browser. So we'll paste our prompt there. Oh boy, and once again, there is no ability to intake any Excel or CSV files. And unlike with Gemini, where we were able to go try it somewhere else, we don't have that option because this is just kind of standalone. Um, let's see, can we do it in Canvas? Nope, still nothing. So a complete flop for Meta AI for kind of a basic forecasting tool, which is really interesting. So overall, to recap, I'd say we got probably we were going to get the best output from Claude if it could have handled the data size. I think we got the best overall output from ChatGPT all in, just kind of first, kind of one shot once we adjusted for daily. Uh, and I think the, the other best one was DeepSeek. I was really disappointed, completely disappointed in Gemini, and I thought Copilot was pretty weak too. It's, it's actually really surprising, and then we, we really couldn't try Meta AI. So all in all, I think the way I'd rank these is I'd probably put ChatGPT first, just because I'm I'm still not quite sure about the data security on DeepSeek. So I'll probably go ChatGPT, DeepSeek, Claude, if we can find data sets that work in it. Uh, from there, I would probably go Amazon Nova, Copilot, Gemini, and then Meta, purely because we couldn't get in there. But really fascinating to see. It looks like that the old standby ChatGPT is still a great tool. Um, and I certainly hope Google and Microsoft can advance this. They're built right into the tools we use, Google Sheets and Excel, depending on what, you, what your company or what you're using. So I certainly hope they can come give us some better functionality because that was honestly really shocking and really disappointing. If you've enjoyed this video on AI, then I highly encourage you to check out my video on AI coding. It's a really cool way to use AI tools to write code, whether that's for visual basic macros, whether it's for Python or SQL, whatever you need, I'm going to teach you step by step how to use AI to save time and write all your code automatically. I'll catch you in the next video. Until then, this is Mike signing off from F9 Finance. Cheers.